lego 2k drive is finally here and today i'm gonna go on ahead and walk you guys through some of the tips and tricks for the early game that i wish i knew when i was playing for the very first time so the first mechanic we're gonna cover is actually a mechanic for healing one of the things that i feel like this game does not really communicate very well to you is that if you go on ahead and smash into objects creating bricks all around you you can actually utilize those to heal back up allowing you to essentially take advantage of the lego mechanic and idea where as your vehicle bumps into things or people bump into you you take damage bricks fall away from your car but as you go on ahead and bump into other brick made items you can rebuild your vehicle and heal it quote unquote back up lego 2k drive is essentially a kart racer and if you've ever played any kart racer the most famous one of all is of course mario kart you know that power-ups are a very very crucial component of this genre and this one is no different filled with some really cool abilities that you can utilize as part of battle as you're racing in any and all tracks but one of the things that's very cool is that you can actually deactivate a power up in order to pick up another one because if you are utilizing a power up as you're driving over another one you won't actually pick it up if you're currently going through the animation of the previous one you had activated so in order to actually pick up the new power up make sure to deactivate your power up by just simply clicking the power up button once again a lot of people are going to struggle with the drift mechanic in this game because it is a little bit tricky and a lot of people will definitely find it to be a challenge. Well, fortunately enough, they actually have a really cool feature in the settings for the game that you can go on ahead and utilize. By going into the settings, you can activate something called tap drift where you're going to be able to activate drifting just by simply tapping the l2 button or the drift button whatever you assigned it to be instead of holding it and trying to utilize it with a bit more finesse and skill this will allow you to complete a lot of the drift missions and challenges with far more ease and of course if you want to deactivate the drift just tap the button once again the vast majority of the items in lego 2k drive are completely destructible that means when you drive into them they will go flying into tons and tons of lego pieces as i mentioned before and actually be utilized to heal up your vehicle but that is the case for almost all the items with the exception of those pesky weeds or shrubs these things are an absolute nightmare they are the one component that you want to avoid like the plague if you see them jump over them and boost to avoid getting stuck in those weeds because if you do you're going to lose all your momentum and you will most likely lose the race one of the things that i wish i would have known before i completed my very first playthrough for lego 2k drive is the fact that the game starts you out at a very weird number for the voice volume so if you go into the settings and you go into audio you'll notice that voice volume is set to 85 percent and it's really not that much of a bother until you hit the cutscenes, where multiple times I had trouble to actually hear the voices being delivered from the characters. So I would definitely go into the audio settings and turn that at least up to 90 and ideally 100%. That way you have nice crisp audio for when the characters are speaking. There are five main statistics that you worry about when you play LEGO 2K Drive. Those are top speed, how fast your vehicle is capable of going, acceleration, this determines how quickly you can reach your top speed, handling, which is essentially going to determine how well or poorly you'll be able to steer and handle the vehicle, and health. The healthier you are, the longer you'll be able to survive taking damage, which means the longer you'll be able to stay on track. And finally, there's the element of weight, where the more bricks are on your vehicle, the heavier it gets. Light, medium, and heavy vehicles all have advantages and weaknesses, and you need to try to find which one works best for your personal driving style. However, one of the things that the game does not really articulate very well is the fact that there is then unique abilities on some vehicles. This is particularly true for the rivals collection the vehicles that you earn from defeating the different rivals across the map reward you with some really unique cars and the vast majority of these have unique abilities as well which is something that you need to pay attention to because they will make your life a whole heck of a lot easier in certain situations 
So for example, the Cat Deville has the Yarnet ability, which basically drops exploding yarn balls, but does go on ahead and take a bit more damage from oncoming attacks, but it automatically gives you an advantage when it comes to having an automatic offensive weapon, not having to pick up power-ups. Or if we go over to the Chamfred Wagon vehicle, you'll notice that there's the Money Buys Pain, which damage by smashing props, but you get more boost from them, which essentially means that you're able to destroy things. Yes, you'll be taking a little bit of damage instead of healing, but you'll be collecting boosts, allowing you to maneuver much faster. So obviously these abilities are not gonna be broken. They will have a balanced element to them, but they're one thing that makes a lot of these rival vehicles an absolute standout when it comes to racing. When it comes to boosting in a LEGO 2K drive, yes, you can go on ahead and go through the trouble of holding down X or whatever button you've assigned to your boost and tapping it at a time. Sometimes the issue though, when you are in a very, very high paced race, you're gonna have trouble remembering that you have some boosts available and you're gonna run through the problem of where you're constantly thinking, wait, I should be boosting right now. I should be boosting right now. Well, the cool thing is that once you hit that B rank, you can just go on ahead and actually double tap X in order to lock in your boost and you will burn the entire boost meter, allowing you to advance much quicker and more sufficiently. And plus it allows you to then focus on the steering and handling of your car instead of just constantly paying attention to how much of a boost meter you still have left. I found that one mechanic to be so useful, being able to just double tap the X button, in my case on the PlayStation, in order to boost quickly and not worry about managing my boost and instead just worrying about passing my opponents. Plus it gives you a flame effect so that you can actually knock into enemies. So it is an absolutely powerful, powerful ability. If you love racing games, I know that one of the things that racing game connoisseurs love is different camera angles. And unfortunately, LEGO 2K Drive doesn't really do much as far as that is concerned. But the cool thing is that if you go on ahead and press the R1 button, you can get a much more close in and zoomed in angle of the vehicle that you're driving, giving you a much more dynamic feel than the usual much more zoomed out and panned up camera view that you'll be playing in. So again, it's not perfect, but at least it does give you an option. And of course, keep in mind when I say the R1 button, that will be different depending on whatever console you're playing on. Everybody loves freedom. And one of the things that is obviously a very identifiable mechanic in the 2K Drive video game is the transformation of the different vehicles. You can go from your road vehicle to off-road vehicle and to a water or a boat vehicle at your own leisure or at least that's the setting that i wanted to cover because if you play the game you'll notice that the game actually does those transformations for you so if you drive from a road onto an off-road you'll see that it transforms you go from off-road onto water it will go on ahead and transform again but maybe you want to control those transformations maybe you want to be the one that decides when those transformations happen well, fear not because the game does offer you that option. And all you have to do is pause your game, head on over to settings, and then under the gameplay options, you'll notice a feature called automatic transformation. It will actually be turned on by default, but if you'd like to turn it off, you just go on ahead and do so. Make sure that you save before exiting. And if you've done that, then as you drive, you can press the L1 button or whatever is the equivalent on your platform of choice, and that will allow you to transform at your own leisure. This means that you can now take off-road vehicles onto roads and vice versa. That means being able to drive your road vehicles off-road, which is probably not that recommended because the vast majority of them will not perform well, but the nice thing is that at least you have the option to control that feature, and it actually does come up quite effectively in several different challenges and mini games in particular and for the final topic we're talking about wow. xp or experience which is something that you definitely need to be familiar with if you're planning to get through the entire campaign and boy oh boy it can be a little bit frustrating because a lot of mini games in this game don't really award you with a whole lot of xp neither do many of the other tasks so you might find yourself a little bit frustrated with getting 
to your required levels. Now, when I say that, some people will say, what do you mean required levels? That's because some of the races in the actual story are not accessible until you reach a certain level threshold. So you have to hit a certain level. In fact, going from level 10 to 20 is quite a bit of work. But what I have found to work the best is actually going back to the races that you had available to you and competing in them again because they seem to be the most rewarding when it comes to actual XP. Most of the time giving you at least 150 XP points and in some cases as many as 500 XP points if you're competing at a higher rank. Meaning that if you completed a race at the C rank, going through and completing it at the B rank will be very, very rewarding. And it is, in my personal opinion and experience, the fastest way to get those pesky levels onto your profile. So there you have it, guys. I hope this helps out. I hope you enjoy this tips and tricks video for LEGO 2K Drive. If you did, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And, of course, if you'd like to go on ahead and check out part number one of my gameplay walkthrough for this game, it is currently on your screen. And in addition to that, you can also go on ahead and check out another one of the videos that has gone live on the channel. Thanks all for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye, everyone.